One of the most paranormal things about our program is that we had continuous support from a particular group of agencies, NASA, the Army, the Air Force, for 20 years to do this group of experiments. Mm -hmm. It was a ground-shattering moment when Ingo Swan, a famed physicist and scholar, made some unbelievable claims about what he saw on the moon. The sensational scientist was given a golden opportunity to scan the moon like no one else has ever done, and the results were mind-blowing. Although he took an oath of silence, several details Swan exposed in his book during his last years have sent shockwaves through the scientific community while throwing the general public into a frenzy. What did Ingo Swan find on the moon? And what shocking revelations did he share in his book that sent ripples through the scientific community? Join us in this video as extraterrestrial moon bases are real. Ingo Swan finally breaks his silence. Lunar exploration has always been accompanied by great intrigue and fascination. As our nearest cosmic neighbour, this ball of wonder doesn't just provide ample lighting for our dark nights. It also presents itself as a fascinating object of scientific study. Since time immemorial, cosmologists and astronomers have sought ways to get their hands on the moon, or at least see it up close. The undying desire to explore the moon prompted countless peeking through telescopes, as well as the execution of the now famous Apollo missions, which served as a giant leap for mankind. Thanks to all these collective efforts, humanity has uncovered many secrets about this shining white ball. However, the greatest, most shocking secrets of the moon were revealed by one man, Ingo Swan. To the general public, Ingo Swan was an American physicist and artist. However, to the government and certain secret organizations, Swan was more than a scholar. He was a telepathic superhuman. With his sensational telepathy, Swan did something no human could, peering into the moon to uncover deep, dark secrets. Rumors have it that Ingo Swan signed a top secret agreement to keep everything he had learned about the moon a secret. It wasn't until his sensational book, Penetration, was released that he finally broke his silence. The many mind-blowing facts presented by Ingo Swan in this phenomenal work of literature have left readers all over the world completely stunned. Ingo Swan also took it upon himself to attend many interviews, sharing shocking details about himself and his past life working with the US government. The information shared in his book and many interviews form some of the most shocking revelations ever. In this iconic work, Ingo Swan cited a book by a man named Walter Sullivan, written in 1964. Just like Swan, this man believed that humanity was not alone in the universe, and much of his argument was based on telescopic information and other data from agencies like NASA. But Sullivan's book wasn't the only historical literature that revealed the shocking reality of alien existence. George Leonard published a similar book in the 1970s, titled We Discovered Alien Bases on the Moon. Moving along the same lines, Swan made the same proposition about aliens nesting on the moon, only this time with a unique telepathic approach. You see, Ingo Swan wasn't your everyday human. From a tender childhood, the American had discovered he had a unique talent. He could see telepathically, far beyond what an average human could fathom. Swan was one of the first humans alive to have the honorable gift of remote viewing, meaning he could scan entirely different locations thousands of miles away with his telepathic power. Swan's book, published in 2011, was a real eye-opener. With several shocking revelations about aliens and UFOs, the enigmatic manuscript has won the hearts of alien conspiracy theorists and ufologists all over the world. It's not every day you get to see someone with phenomenal talent and abilities who spent lots of time working undercover for the government come out to reveal all his secrets. Swan's undercover journey as a government agent began back in the late 1970s when the men in black summoned him to participate in vigorous research. 
though details of Swan's epic journey through the corridors of government agencies are still vague. At least we know from Swan's own words that he became a guinea pig for research. One popular establishment Swan mentioned in his book is the think tank Stanford Research Institute, or what we now know as SRI. Before that time, Swan had the opportunity to work with tons of other researchers, and as you'd expect, he was the star of the show. Swan had the phenomenal ability to scan any part of the globe remotely and sketch the roads, houses, or topography of that place with terrifying accuracy. It was something new, something nobody in the scientific community or the world at large had ever seen. Little by little, the researchers kept pushing Swan to tougher experiments, stretching the limits of his abilities. But the ultimate stretcher was when the Stanford Research Institute reached out to Ingo Swan, demanding that he use his godlike talents to scan the nearby cosmic neighborhood. Swan knew he was in for a big challenge, as he had never dared to use his remote viewing abilities on any place outside Earth. Not too surprisingly, Swan rejected the offer. His initial reasons were that scanning the planets of the solar system wasn't going to be easy, and secondly, there would be no way to verify any of his findings. Even if Swan projected his consciousness to any of the eight planets and relayed his findings to the research team, it would be easy for them to discredit him if they found his tales unbelievable. As a smart American, Swan knew that remotely viewing anything that wasn't verifiable was risky, as many skeptics could simply discard his revelations as a mere guess. However, Swan had a change of heart when a groundbreaking science innovation burst on the scene, the Pioneer Space Probe. The Pioneer Space Probe was solely dedicated to studying Jupiter. Luckily, this was the very same planet the Research Institute wanted Ingo Swan to shine his telepathic light on. And so, realizing that this probe could serve as an invaluable confirmatory tool and alibi for his research, Swan opted in for the program. Swan's mind blowing revelations about Jupiter were as accurate as possible. He shared the existence of massive rotating storms like cyclones, ice crystals in the atmosphere, and the enigmatic color of Jupiter's clouds. It's not clear how Ingo Swan managed to tune in his cosmic antenna to capture all these details, but scientists at the Institute were stunned at his results. The pioneer confirmed that everything this man saw was right. The most shocking part was when Ingo Swan revealed something no one had ever seen or heard about Jupiter before not even the renowned Pioneer space probe. Swan revealed the presence of a ring around Jupiter, something that astronomers of that decade were still unaware of, at least not until the launch of the Voyager 1 space probes in later years. As if using a telescope, Swan aptly described how Jupiter's rings were made out of tiny dust particles. You can say he was the James Webb of the scientific community at that time. However, there was a twist to all this. When the science community got an idea of how accurate Swan's telepathic abilities were, all of the research projects he was involved with got classified. Swan wasn't allowed to share even the slightest detail of what he was undergoing with the agencies. And the most shocking part of Swan's journey was what followed next. After his outstanding success in surveying the distant planet Jupiter, Ingo Swan was approached by the government for a top secret mission. He had received a strange call one morning in March 1975. Like something out of a movie, the anonymous man on the other end of the phone ordered Swan to take a trip to the Museum of National History in Washington. The voice told Swan to stand near a large elephant in the center part of the museum at exactly 12 noon. It was a frightening encounter to say the least. However, shocked and intrigued at the same time, Swan couldn't help but follow the instructions of this mystery caller. When he positioned beside the elephant, a stranger dressed like a typical government agent approached him and handed him a note. The whole thing was baffling, but the content of the note was even more disturbing. It read thus, Do not speak or ask questions. This is for your safety as well as ours. Please follow me. As if in a trance, Ingo Swan was led by this enigmatic stranger to the backseat of a car waiting outside, 
where another stranger welcomed him. The first thing that happened to Swan after he entered this vehicle was a brutal, thorough search. In his book, Swan indicated that the purpose of this unexpected activity was to see if he had any listening devices or spy equipment on him. After finding they were satisfied that he had nothing on him, the man in black asked him if he could work with them on a top secret project that involved his special talents. Although he was still puzzled about who he would be working for or what he was getting to, Ingo Swan agreed to the deal. Call it bravery or intrigue. The fact remains that Ingo Swan was taken that day, blindfolded to a top secret location or what you would call a secret base. Swan disclosed that the unfriendly friends in black never took off the bag they covered his face with until they arrived at their secret base. From there, the phenomenal psychic was taken to meet a superior and get full details about the job he'd be doing. It turns out he was getting recruited for a remote viewing project with a daily pay of a whopping $1,000 in cash. Such a mouth-watering sum was more than enough proof of how much Ingo Swan was valued for his psychic abilities. Certainly, it's no surprise that Ingo Swan hopped on the mouth-watering offer. Who wouldn't? However, there was a catch. Ingo Swan was mandated to stay in the facility throughout the course of the research project, no going out or coming in. Again, he was never to mention a word about what he saw or did in the facility to anyone, at least for the next 10 years. Swan kept his own end of the deal, and his universe-shattering book was only released after the said 10 years had elapsed. It was a wild adventure for Ingo Swan, so wild that he regarded himself as nothing more than a lab rat or guinea pig. And yes, this was the CIA, the same shadow government organization that has been caught up in a web of conspiracies over the past decades. The ultimate aim of the men in black in this classified mission was to use Ingo Swan's abilities to spy on the moon. Wasting no precious time, the agency handed over the moon's coordinates to Swan the very next day, so he could know exactly where to pinpoint his telepathic antennas. Swan, freshly geared up and loaded for the task, wasted no time in peering into the vast surface of this magnificent white celestial ball of wonder. However, nothing could prepare Swan for what he found on the moon. It was completely spine-chilling. Quoting Swan's words during an interview, These remote viewing sessions, well, you know, shoot some things on the moon that I thought were really outrageously strange, like people there, big structures, lots of activity and things like that. This was a shocking blow to Swan, finding structures and strange activity on the moon. For a celestial body that has always been thought to be uninhabited or even lifeless, Swan was flabbergasted to find evidence suggesting the presence of aliens on the moon. From wide craters to strange white dunes of unknown materials, Swan saw it all. But even more mind-boggling was the strange tracks he found on the moon Tracks that resembled the patterns you find when heavy machinery like tractors moves over land areas. It was absolutely shocking. Adding to the enigma, Swan noticed the presence of a weird large crater covered to the brim with a greenish haze he couldn't comprehend. When he zoomed in his telepathic lens to investigate this puzzling phenomenon, what he saw left him speechless. It turned out to be a moon base, similar to the Air Force or naval bases we have here on Earth, complete with hangars and whatever other fancy stuff you could imagine. Swan saw roads, machinery, and several other amazing stuff he couldn't explain. His mind-blowing discovery raised so many questions. How did all these get on the moon? Who was building them? And what purpose could they possibly serve? Swan wouldn't have believed it himself if he hadn't seen these things through his own godlike powers. You see, going by our history and knowledge of the moon, nothing of this sort should exist, much less on this massive scale. Swan admitted this himself when he spoke, saying, You know, we've been taught many years that the moon is a dead place. There was no water, no air, no nothing, you know. I saw air there, at least. I don't think I commented on water on the moon, but it's only in the last two years that science has finally admitted that there is water on the moon. But back in the 60s, this was denied. Everybody was taught to believe that it was dead air. 
Ingo Swan's incredible discovery totally contradicts everything we thought we knew about the Moon. And it becomes all the more baffling when you consider that this was just one out of the many disturbing things Swan discovered on the Moon. You see, after turning his telepathic lenses to another direction, Swan spotted another intriguing lunar wonder. There were several dome structures littered on the Moon's surface, some emitting strange lights of different colours. However, these domes were also covered by the same mysterious green haze. An ultra-focused zoom-in revealed some windows on these domes. With meticulous focus and precision, Swan telepathically peered into these mystifying windows, and there he found the most shocking secret of all. There were humanoid beings inside the domes, beings that looked very much like us. Ingo Swan noted that these creatures were seriously working on something he couldn't quite make out. But then what happened next is still a psychic mystery no one has been able to understand till today. Suddenly, as if alerted by a silent invisible alarm, all the beings paused what they were doing, one by one, and then did something Ingo Swan never expected. All at once, they turned and gazed at the window through which Ingo was projecting himself. It was as if they were peering into his soul. How these things managed to detect Swan's presence is still a mystery, but it was the most rattling moment of the entire project for Ingo Swan. He quickly told his clients or hirers that he had been spotted by the crazy beings on the moon. That's when he was told to abort mission. It was the last time Swan would ever view the moon remotely for the federal government. The experiment was over. Swan's shocking testimony has sent shivers down the spine of several folks who were opportune to hear it, and it has raised many questions as well. Could this be aliens? If yes, what were these beings doing on the moon? Also, could it be that NASA and the Soviet Union encountered these beings during their many trips to the celestial body? Many members of the public have always raised questions as to why NASA never returned to the moon after the initial Apollo missions of the 1970s and 80s. Although official records hold that there wasn't much need for a return mission, conspiracy theories have long trailed the agency, accusing them of seeing aliens on the moon. Darker conspiracy theories even suggest that the agency may have retrieved some alien remains from the dark side of the moon and still holds on to them today. And just in case you don't believe in telepathy, or you feel all of Ingo Swan's revelations are mere mumbo-jumbo, recent scientific data has confirmed the existence of mysterious craters and structures on the Moon. The dome-like structures Swan encountered have been spotted in lunar images, and experts are still wrapping their heads around them. Some experts have studied these enigmatic structures and admitted to the media that these do not belong on the Moon. In light of Ingo Swan's discovery of humanoid aliens, there's still a lot we don't know about these cosmic beings docking on our celestial neighborhood star. The way Swan described these structures is just spine chilling. And moreover, why were these structures attributed to having green haze covering them? In canvassing the various tales, rumors, and conspiracy theories of aliens, one species seems to meet the specifics described in Swan's breathtaking discovery. Reptilians. These reptilian humanoids have been referenced in many historical texts, folklore, fiction, and conspiracy theories. Supposedly, these beings are shapeshifters from somewhere in the cosmos that have been studying and mingling with humanity for centuries. Some conspiracy theories suggest that these mystic creatures have a base on Earth or the Moon, with some even suggesting darker things like an alien takeover. However, not much factual evidence has surfaced to prove the existence of these beings. In all, Swan had a lot more to reveal to the world than we could ever imagine. In a secret interview, the phenomenal Mindbender revealed that after his eventful journey with the Feds, he wrote about seven books. However, six of them were never published. Apparently, the contents of these books were so alarming and sensitive that no publisher wanted to bear the risk of publishing them. What exactly did this man write about? And why were publishing companies so scared to get his books out there? Well, 
There's no way to tell the exact contents of these mysterious works of literature Swan created. However, from the little details garnered, it turns out that the contents of Swan's books were a big controversy to the stories and narratives humanity has been told by agencies like NASA. NASA, the top dog in space exploration, has always held a strong stance when it comes to the existence of aliens and extraterrestrials. The agency, to date, holds an official claim that there haven't been any confirmed alien sightings anywhere in the universe, and neither has any planet been observed that holds alien life. And so, could it be that Ingo Swan's books contained shocking evidence of the existence of aliens and UFOs? Given that Swan's one and only published book contained shocking claims of alien existence, it's very likely that the rejected manuscripts held some even darker truths. Swan, at a point in his book, mentioned that the aliens he encountered on the moon were no friendly beings, but were, in fact, hostile. Perhaps this was why neither Russia nor the US succeeded in colonizing the moon. The so-called space race ended in a tie, with neither nation taking the trophy of setting up camp on the moon. Just maybe these aliens presented a roadblock in that direction, and the agencies had no choice but to keep quiet about the whole thing. Even more shocking is the fact that recent moon landing attempts have failed woefully. Several space objects have repeatedly crashed on the lunar surface. It makes you wonder, how come these advanced probes can barely make a decent landing when ancient probes from NASA and the Soviets were landing astronauts on the moon? Surely, Ingo Swan's book and testimonies have given the general public a lot to think about. And it all makes you wonder what exactly the scientific community isn't telling us, or if everything we've been told was a lie. With Ingo Swan gone, we just might need another superpower psychic to fact-check these things. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.